I just thought I'd show a quick video of something that I've done. I know a lot of people talk about how to use the Raspberry Pi to actually function with useful electronics. It's nice playing with LEDs, as people say, but they're not that bright and they're not that brilliant. So what can we do which is useful? Now, YouTube, you will find a lot of information on how to use larger reed switches to switch on lights which i do actually have one right here so that one's a reed switch to switch on larger lights 240 volts but then i thought hold on a minute how can i go about doing this so i don't have to use high voltages then i found one of these it is a 12 volt caravan lamp and it's got a lot of brightness to it. Um, I actually originally bought these to use for bedside lamps. Thought brilliant for bedside lamps and um, then I thought how can I get it to work via, via the Raspberry Pi? So then I thought about the um, the Darlington array and the open collector. Now I happen to have a GERT board which I'm quite lucky for um, so I thought, let me hook that up. So I hooked it up and did the test and it worked. Then I quickly, very, very crudely, it is a very crude sort of setup. I've just used a breadboard and a bit of sellotape tape there in a few places. And it is wired to a 12 volt power supply there. Just a normal power adapter. And that is, again, it's a little bit crude. I need to sort it out properly yet. And um, I quickly did a quick Python script. Um, got the Python script there, so I've got sudo python, if I can find it, lamp on. There you go, lamp on. Then we go sudo python lamp off, lamp off, lamp on, lamp off, lamp on, lamp off. Now, nice and easy, nice and simple. If you don't have a GERT board, it is possible to use a Darlington array separately off GPIO. Basically all I am doing is setting GPIO output to true or false. True, lamp on, false, lamp off. That is all it is. There's nothing else in there. You know, I mean, I hopefully, you know, I mean, I'll be able to um, put a bit more code in to make it a little bit more intricate, do something nicer. Because at the moment, you know, I mean, there's still a bit of um, work I need to do. One thing I do need to do, if you can see there, I've got a switch, switch doesn't work. But if I've got the switch on the off position and I go lamp on, lamp will not go on. So I don't and I don't want GPIO to be on on at all times. It defeats the purpose of home automation. So one thing I will do is I need to design the circuitry because I have opened this little panel and I can bypass that switch if I wanted to. But again, bypassing that switch means that I'll be able to use the script, but I won't be able to use the switch. So I will be um, designing a circuit just inside that area. There's quite a lot of space in there to do something where I can actually use the script as well as the button. So if, for example, I've got GPIO output false, I can still switch it on and off from here. So that's something I need to do. But it's a good concept and my main purpose of showing this was concept um ignore the larger breadboard that is actually um the magpie um home alarm system i tried it out last night it works a treat um so we can ignore that for a minute but it's just here see again you know 240 volts on a breadboard not recommended not something you should be doing but 12 volts perfectly fine and very safe to touch as well so that's something that I will be expanding as well. I probably will end up putting all three lamps. I bought three of them from my three bedrooms. And I'll be putting them all on to this system here. So I can have them on and off remotely via Shush on my mobile phone. I've got the iPhone. So I've got um, iShush is the app um, that I use. And um, I can Shush in and do whatever I need to do. So I just thought I'd show you this as a proof of sort of concept that larger lights very bright there as you can see can be run with low voltage quite happily 
and of the Raspberry Pi. Thank you.